All right, uh, this is Mark Fidelman with Fanatics Media and occasionally Forbes. I'm just kidding, we're on Forbes too. Uh, joining me today is Jeremy Cowart, world's most influential photographer, at least a couple of years ago when I was talking to them on a, on a regular basis. Uh, and we're gonna talk to him today, episode three of Influencer and Advocate TV, about what Jeremy's doing. What's the life of an influential photographer? You know, what your projects you're working on, if you're working with any brands, and really, you know, get into your world, Jeremy, and how you as an influencer are making, or, you know, changing your world one, you know, step at a time. So with that, Jeremy, I'd love to kind of allow you to kind of introduce yourself and the way we like to do it on this program is to kind of tell us, you know, where Jeremy came from and, and where you, you've you been and, and where you are today. So walk us through kind of your childhood. And there's a great video, by the way. Look in the show notes below. There's a great video he produced. It was 25 minutes long on Facebook where you can get a more in-depth analysis of what this guy has been through. It's been through a lot. He, you know, he's, he's been through some amazing stuff, a lot of negativity. Uh, I can't believe you overcame some of the obstacles you overcame to do what you're doing today. So it's fantastic. And it's good to see you, you giving back. So we'll, we'll get into all that, but Jeremy, let's start with kind of your childhood and what shaped you when, when, uh, you, uh, you, you first started. Sure. Uh, I grew up, uh, outside of Nashville, Tennessee in Hendersonville and, uh, grew up in a really, you know, great home, great loving parents, two older brothers. And, uh, but uh, just, you know, I was kind of a very normal kid. I, I wasn't, didn't shine in any way, uh, made a lot of not great grades. And uh, I just kind of grew up thinking like, oh, I'm just not going to accomplish much in life. I'm going to fly into the radar. I was really shy and quiet and insecure and like probably most people. And um, yeah, just uh, didn't think too, you know, too much of myself. And uh, I don't know, didn't, I mean, I was never unhappy either. Just a very average uh kind of middle class uh, background and um, it was fat, discovered art in middle school and, you know, pursued art and music all the way through school and college. I studied design, I uh, worked for a couple ad agencies after college and uh, started my own design firm because I realized that world wasn't for me. And all the while, you know, in college, I made a D in my only photography class. Like I was just always like not, <laughs> not doing anything great. Um, and then a few years after running my own design firm, a friend told me about this thing called digital photography, uh, starting to date ourselves now. But that was in 2001 and, um, you know, grabbed a camera so I could shoot things to incorporate into my design work and uh, fell, in love, fell in love with the camera and photography. Then I started shooting all my friends uh, who happened to be musicians and, happened, you know, at the time they were getting signed to record labels record labels started hiring me and then a, a Hollywood agent uh, in, in LA discovered me and then we signed a deal and then all of a sudden I was shooting, you know, A-list celebrities. And so the whole thing was all very accidental and organic and um, it just, you know, I just kind of, I guess I, I lucked out, but I also worked really, really hard um, and it's been a, a blur ever since. Well, I mean, that's kind of a, the Cliff Notes version, is it not? Uh, very, very much, yeah. Some of the, how did you get your first celebrity? How, how did you accomplish that? Well, it depends. I mean, I guess it would depend on what you refer to as celebrity, because I, I got several celebrities here in Nashville, local, well-known musicians that probably wouldn't classify as a celebrity, but they were, they're celebrities to Nashville. And uh, yeah. I was shooting a lot of those people, but I feel like my first like big, big celebrity was when my agent, uh, sent me to LA for a job to shoot uh, Sting, and uh, I think that grabbed a lot of attention. And people started like, "Whoa, Jeremy just shot!" You know that that's always kind of been one of those defining early moments in my career, and um, super thankful for that. So yeah, and that was uh, that was probably 2005, I think. Well, now wait a second. I don't even know if photographers had agents. Why do you have agents? Yeah, right. Uh, I'll never forget the day she called me because I actually had beat her for a job and uh, I didn't know that agents existed. And she called me. I was driving on the interstate and she said, hey, Jeremy, my name is Karen uh, and I represent photographers. And I'd love for you to check out my website because I really love your work and I'd love to represent you. And so I get home and I go check out her website and there's all these other, you know, famous photographers who shoot celebrities for a living. And uh, of course, I was blown away. 
And shortly thereafter, we signed a deal. It's basically like getting a record label for a musician. And uh, we signed a deal, and then she starts, you know, sending me to meetings all over Los Angeles and New York. And next thing you know, I'm, you know, shooting big time stuff. And that was all literally within six months of choosing to even do photography. Uh, so it was a very fast um, rise. And now, now I can appreciate how fast it was because now I understand just how hard it is to get a lot of those jobs and to find an agent. And so at the time I was like, yeah, this all sounds great. But it was, uh, it was very lucky for sure. Okay, so it's one thing to start shooting celebrities. It's another to start promoting yourself or your work or other people on social media. So when did you decide to make that leap to social media? Uh, man, Twitter, Twitter came about. One of my, my uh, former business partner was all, always a technology guru and still is. In fact, he's still working with me on various things. Um, and I just remember he texted me, I think it was in 2006, like within a month or two of Twitter even getting on the Internet. I mean, Twitter was brand new when I joined. And uh, I, I have such a short attention span anyway that, you know, 140 characters at a time sounded perfect. And so I just started tweeting and then uh, and just always stuck to it. And I would, of course, in the beginning, my tweets were ridiculous and super boring and and they probably still are. But, um, you know, I just kind of fell in love with the platform. And, and then I think uh, I don't know when it was, but eventually Twitter fe featured me as a, as a user and uh, which I'm forever grateful for. And ever since then, you know, my following has, has, has built a good little, good little platform for me. And, and then other, the rest of the social media world kind of, you know, took notice in certain ways. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's, that's how it all got started. Now you decided to jump into Facebook and Instagram, right? Are those your two other er places that you like to hang out? Yeah, um, Facebook, I've always been on. I didn't start my own like, public page till probably too late. But, um, yeah, it's such a great way to just connect with your friends and family. And then when public pages became a thing, I tried to try to get on board and, uh, and uh, still have a lot of growing to do there. But I use all the platforms in different ways. You just kind of learn. You learn your audience over time. And my Twitter you know, audience is, I feel like, quite different from my Facebook audience. And then... Um, Instagram has been a hard one for me because even though I'm a photographer, I can't show a lot of my uh, corporate, I'm not corporate, commercial work. I can't show a lot of these celebrity shoots I'm doing because they're either buyouts or they're not releasing till a year later. And then I'm not necessarily inspired by my own surroundings. I live in a very suburban, you know, part of Tennessee. I'm surrounded by, you know, old navies and targets and, you know. And so I don't shoot a lot. And so, uh, so yeah, I'm kind of stuck in a weird place on Instagram. But I do have a, you know, a good little following there. And uh, I hope to always be learning and growing on how to engage at following, especially through the hotel process. I think I now have a, a really interesting story and just a journey to start sharing. And so Instagram will certainly become a part of that. Now, you've got, uh, I don't know how you did this, but you got over 2 million views on a 30-minute uh, Facebook video that you put up. So I, I've got two questions. One, why did you choose Facebook to host all your videos? And maybe you have a YouTube channel. I, I just didn't, uh, I didn't research it before this, this interview, but why do you choose Facebook and how the heck did you get 2.5 million views? Uh, and I can't imagine it's all organic, but how did you get 2.5 million views for that last video? Um, yeah, I mean, I do have a YouTube channel, but it has, I mean, I've never pushed it. I've never promoted it. It's its basically a joke. Um, and I was just seeing the, the natural engagement just recently when Facebook really kind of started focusing more on video content. And like, as I would scroll my feed, it was like all videos, you know, it was no more just um, all text updates. It was just video after video. And I would sit there, you know, wake up in the morning and lay in bed and just watch random videos on Facebook. And, uh, and, uh, so I just thought I'd try both. I actually uploaded it to YouTube and Facebook and, um, you know, 2.5 million views on Facebook versus a hundred thousand views on YouTube for a 25 minute video. And, uh, and not only to me, what's more been more fascinating is 40,000 people have shared it yeah. to, the, to their timelines, uh, which is really incredible. And, and it wasn't ever really supposed to be a video. It was, it was a talk that I'd been doing live from stages. 
And uh, the response has been so overwhelming for a few years, the last few years. Everybody says, where can I find that video online? And I didn't release it for years because uh, I just wasn't ready yet. It wasn't, it was, I hadn't, it's a very weird mixed media talk. And so um, I had to do it to get it right before I released it. And now it's out there. And uh, thankfully it did very well. Are you using Facebook Live at all? I think I remember because I get most of your updates. I thought you did a live photo shoot on Facebook Live, but tell us about your your thoughts on that and whether you've experimented with it or, or whether you're using it on a regular basis. Yeah, no, I think Facebook Live is incredible. I have used it. The engagement is uh, is insane. You know, I'm on Periscope as well. And so um, it's just so much easier to to get your Facebook audience engaged. It's something we've already been working on for years. So why not, you know, develop that? And obviously they're, you know, trying to compete with uh, Periscope and Meerkat, all these other platforms. Um, and obviously they're doing a really good job because everybody's just, I'm even finding that I'm having a hard time engaging my Periscope crowd because it's just easier to, to do to do Facebook Live. Yeah, I mean, you got a bill, bigger built-in audience. A lot of it's friends and family too, which makes you feel good that at least you have them watching. Yeah. You know, that's, what I, that's what I feel is is driving a lot of these people. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've joined Snapchat as well, by the way. You're doing Snapchat? Yeah. We got to cover that in just yeah. a minute. We're going to stay on Facebook for just a minute longer. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but Facebook paid 20 influencers. We know about half of them, uh, 2.2 million dollars to kind of promote Facebook Live as influencers. And as you know, that's what we do. And we're big fans of using influencers to launch really anything. Um, and I think Facebook, having all that marketing data that's out there was very smart to say, hey, even with all the marketing data we have, which is more than any of us, we still believe influencers should be launching Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. And I look at you and I'm thinking, it would be very smart for a brand, if they haven't done this already, to launch a product that's related to what you do, you know, whether it's photography or video, in some, some kind of episodic format. So maybe you get a new camera and you use that camera on your celebrity shoots for five or six episodes. And I'm not sure what you're doing now. Uh, I'm sure you're still shooting uh, celebrities and other people, uh, but I don't know how much time you're spending on the hotel or not. And we'll get into that. But have, has anyone approached you about something like that, shooting not just one influencer type of video, but maybe more of an episodic type of situation? No, but I would love that. I mean, it's it's been crazy because for literally years, I've been telling all my clients, like, it's almost like I'm their marketing director. I'm like, you guys have got to be, you know, recording these these photo shoots. And we've got to be tweeting about this and, you know, uh, putting all this on social see. media. And I've literally just been begging them and telling them, like, you'd be smart to do this. People want to see these things. Um, and, of course, it would help me, too. But even yeah. me, me aside, it'd be – and they just never – it's like they're so slow to catch on to, to this stuff. And only recently do I feel like, you know, years and years later, Twitter's been here, what, 10 years now? Um, you know, I feel like only recently are all the brands like, oh, yeah, we should start really, you know, thinking about these things. <laughs> So it's well, what if you fun. hired some kind of junior person to just do it for them and just say, hey, if you want the content, hey, take it and, and put it on your social channels or we're going to. Is there some kind of contractual reason why you can't do that? Um, it depends on the situation, the client. Like I just shot a, a very A-list name last week and they, we've done five shoots together recently. In the first shoot, they let me do a Facebook Live and he was there and they showed him and ever since then it's been on lockdown. They're like, oh, we're going to do these things ourselves. Ah. You know, I go, well, all right, you know, whatever. But uh, but at least they saw the value in it when I did it, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's all it's all important. Okay, so let's uh, let's move to Snapchat real quickly. I, I'm not a big believer in Snapchat for, from a marketing perspective, at least not yet, because you can't link into it. You can't convert from it unless you're paying them a ton of money to be in their discovery tab. But obviously you're doing it, and I know you're a smart guy. What are you getting out of it? Yeah, I think it's um, – I love it because there's a lot of pressure on the other network, on the other platforms. You know, I always feel like I have to be, uh, you know, helpful or or – or wise or post interesting articles or give value through 
but I like that people can see a whole different side of you through Snapchat because it's 24 hours, obviously. It's, it's fun. It's goofy. It's real. Um, it just offers a whole different side of humanity. And it's so intimate. You know, it, it's I've, I've followed a Kim Kardashian just so, for a while, just out of curiosity. I mean, obviously, she's at this top of this social media chain in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, to see the view from her camera looking at all the paparazzi camera shooting her when she walks into an airport, like you don't get that level of intimacy anywhere. And uh, it, it's I just find it to be so raw. Um, and, and that's, the, I honestly think it's a genius way, you know, all these filters, um, where you're putting, you know, the Marvel, Marvel comics movie, uh, characters on your face. Uh, gosh, what a, I just think that marketers are smart to tap into people's egos. So, and, and they're doing that through Snapchat. So people can now take that brand and, and mix it into their own lives. You can't do that anywhere else. I mean, that's why the that's why the ice bucket challenge worked because oh, I get to you know strip down to my bikini and look brave and bold and throw water on my head and you know then dedicate it out for a good cause. Like that was brilliant because it was tapping into people's egos, you know, and letting them letting them look like the hero. Uh, and that's that's really amazing. And I feel like Snapchat is doing that same thing, and it's going to be fascinating to see how it develops and. Um, yeah. And for me, I just, you know, I share a lot of my, my family life, my personal life. Like for example, you know, you'll see things on my Snapchat of my kids and family that I'm not going to take the time to sit up and frame and compose a nicely lit photo of that moment of my children. It's just too much work and I'm on the go all the time. So Snapchat's just an easy, you know, on the run thing. Um, and yeah, so I, I'm, I'm, I think that it's a lot of fun. It's good. It's good pressure. No pressure fun. Okay. But what if, uh, you know, I'm speaking as a marketer. Okay. Not mm -hmm. as a dad, not as mm -hmm. uh, somebody that wants to connect with people like you do on a regular basis. But it seems to me that if you had, if you're taking a bunch of photos and they all disappeared in 24 hours, uh, that's probably not a good thing. So what is it about Snapchat that, you are spending it, it takes a lot of time. I know it does. You are spending a lot of time on Snapchat, but you know that content disappears. That doesn't alarm you at all? Well, you can save your content for one thing. You can save it to your phone and upload it to, to other platforms. You know, you can it's, see. It's in portfolio view, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, I'm just finding that I've got a friend, I won't name the name, but because uh, I don't know if he'd want me to. But he's very, very young, early 20s, and he's having brands pay him crazy amounts of money to take over their Snapchat. And I'm sorry, to not take over their Snapchats, to use his own Snapchat because he has, I think, over you know, 100,000 people watching every snap to, to seamlessly blend their brand into his life. And um, it's amazing. I mean, it's incredible exposure. Um, but then, you know, as a photographer, I can snap... Uh, stories throughout a photo shoot and uh and you can watch the whole story of the day and again it's just so much less pressure uh because you're editing as you go and for me to have somebody come do a facebook live then then you're responding to all the comments you're it's just a lot more focus or a snapchat i love that people can't comment you know i love that you're just putting it out there for them to see and they're joining your story and um yeah it's fun that there's a few photographers that i admire and I love watching their photo shoots and how they approach lighting and how they approach the whole the whole day. Okay, so if you're watching it on a regular basis, you know I think it's it's pretty good, right? Especially like you, you're looking at other photographers. Um, but the fact that it's not saved and you can't link out of it, meaning mm -hmm. you can't just tell them, hey, go to my my page to download my ebook on the best tools that I recommend, right? It's just it's not quite there yet as a marketer's tool. I know you disagree, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, and no, so, I, I don't necessarily disagree. I mean, obviously, I agree with you on those things. And I, I do think Snapchat is, from what I'm understanding, they're slowly morphing into that. But at, yeah. the same time, at the same time, I think that's why people like it so much is it's not this, you know. But I understand your questions, too. You're coming from a marketer's perspective. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Facebook, I, yeah, go oh, ahead. Uh, Facebook said the same thing. You know, we don't want to disturb or interrupt the process, the process of people using Facebook, but they knew they had to make money eventually. And Snapchat <laughs> is 
going to come to that you know rationale eventually. Yeah. They can continue to, to lose money. Right. Uh, so, I mean, from a market's perspective, I, I don't really like it. It doesn't, it's not, it's nowhere near as impactful as a YouTube. Uh, I remember the days when people were paying Kim Kardashian $50,000 for a tweet. I mean, the ROI on that's next to nothing. Sure, you get a lot of exposure, but then it's, it's a fleeting tweet. You know, she's got 20 others that are going to happen and push it out of your feed pretty quickly. Yep. So, yeah. yeah, I can't argue that. There's no doubt. It's true. I think we've, I think we've covered Snapchat a lot. It's just a pet peeve of mine as a marketer. I know the tool mm -hmm. itself is a good tool and people love it. I'm not taking yeah. anything away from that. I got plenty of videos. In fact, I'll put one up here, uh, here that you can see if you want to see my, my comments on it. But right now I want to move to an amazing new project that you've got going on, Jeremy. I'm so excited about it. I'm so excited for you about it. And I'm going to, point again uh, to a video that's going to play here in just a few seconds. Uh, here's a picture of it. And we're going to talk about your new project. Um, and you're calling it the Purpose Hotel, right? Changing the world while you sleep. Mm -hmm. So let's play a little clip of it right now. And then I'm going to come back to you. And uh, you can kind of explain what this is about, why you did it, and what, what the purpose of it is, okay? Sure. My name is Jeremy Cower, and with your help, we are about to build a hotel unlike anything the world has ever seen. I've traveled as a photographer to over 25 countries, staying in countless hotels. They all at least get the job done. But what if they could do more? Could your stay in a hotel help create a better life for someone else? As crazy as that might sound, I believe that it can. So with your help, we are going to build something extraordinary. Introducing the Purpose Hotel. An innovative hotel chain that is the first of its kind because everything has a purpose where your life inside the building improves the world around it. The first one will call Nashville, Tennessee home, and it will bring together some of the most meaningful ideas on earth. Everything you interact with will be stunningly designed and will actively benefit great causes. All right, Jeremy, we just played that the video. Can you kind of give us kind of your take as to why you did this, the purpose of it, and you know where you are today in the process of getting this thing launched and uh i'll be the first one to cheer you on when this thing is open i, I, want, I definitely want to stay opening night well thank you yeah i mean the uh the the idea is to literally build a global hotel chain from scratch and uh, the reason is I, I just i've traveled for you know 15 years around the world the 25 plus countries and they're nice hotels they're cool hotels but there are no hotels that I am passionate about. There's no hotels that that are that are going over and beyond to change the world around us. And so I just started dreaming, like, what if there was a hotel where literally everything in the building, as much as possible, was connected to something greater, you know? And there are so many great nonprofits and even for-profit companies around the world who are doing amazing things from linens to soaps and shampoos to artwork to uh, fight human trafficking, you know, child sponsorship, uh, you know, there's charity water. So uh, why not bring all of these amazing things and put them under one roof to where instead of going and having to figure out how to simultaneously support all of these nonprofits on your own, what if you can make one choice and, you know, go, go support all of these great causes in one night <laughs> while you sleep just by choosing our hotel? So that was the uh, the idea. I had the idea four years ago this summer, and I, I spent three years of three years of that just in total fear, uh, total panic. Just thought it was too big. I was 35 when I had the idea, and I was just terrified of it. And so it wasn't until this past fall of 2015 that I just kind of found that courage again and the guts to go for it and started uh, assembling, you know, my team around me. And ever since then, we've been working uh, super hard to make this thing a reality. So, um, are you right now, are you raising money for it? Where are you in the process? I think you've got a Kickstarter going now. Is that correct? 
Yeah, we just launched our Kickstarter um, two days ago when we we're filming this, and um, we've raised over two hundred thousand dollars in forty-eight hours, which is uh, an awesome start. Uh, but our very ambitious goal is two million dollars. So we obviously have a lot of work to do, and I'm excited for that journey. I think we're going to have to work really hard for it over the next forty-five days. But I am I am ready for the challenge because I, I I literally couldn't believe in this anymore. Uh, it's the most passionate I've ever been about anything. So I'm, I'm ready. Do you have any partners on board? Like, have you approached a Hilton or a Marriott to say, you know, may, should we partner in, uh, in, in doing this? Do you have a hot, some kind of management company that you're going to work with? We are having uh, loose discussions like that. I wouldn't say we're actively seeking it. The dream is to, to do this ourselves. I know that's even crazier. Um, but at the same time, we're, we're not going to shut those discussions down. If somebody, if somebody believes in what we're doing, then we certainly want to have that discussion. I would just fear through a partnership of the vision getting really watered down and turning into another normal hotel chain. And if we're going to do that, then I'll just keep being a photographer because I have no interest in building another hotel. We don't need another hotel. We need a brand that will truly change the world around us. And so if somebody wants to partner, then they're going to have to come in and do what we're trying to do. Um, and we, we have a really good business plan for that, you know, where this hotel actually will make money, will be a great business, but and will, you know, hopefully change everything around us. Are you um, looking at other avenues? I mean, how are you marketing this project and, and what other avenues are you looking at to bring in the $2 million, which I think would be a good down payment to get a loan. Is that, is that correct? Cause the hotel would cost more than 2 million to build. Yeah, yeah. obviously. Yeah. The hotel, I mean, obviously we don't know the end number, but we imagine it'll be a hundred million plus uh, dollar hotel. So the 2 million kind of kicks off our, our studio phase, the creative think tank, all the, you know, where we get the, um, the every, everyone involved. I mean, it really starts building the building essentially. Um, so if someone said, why are you asking for $2 million to explore? And we're not asking for $2 million to explore. This will start the whole process. And the reason for that is I just I love the story of the people starting a hotel chain like this. You know, when you fly over New York City or any other major market, like you just see a sea of buildings, thousands and thousands of buildings. And probably every one of those buildings was built the same way. It starts out with a few investors and, you know, they go get, you know, funding, all that stuff. But what if the people of the world, all over the world, could build a building that helped the people all over the world? So um, for us, it's really about the story more than it is making $2 million. Um, but if we do achieve our goal, we'll be able to say that this is really special. You know, thousands of people around the world started this journey and here we are. And uh, we're actually going to print our, our people's photos in the building, in every building we ever built. So uh, we really do want this to be about uh, the people behind it. Okay. And have you thought about going to all of your influential friends to do some kind of a video promotion requesting people participate in in this program have you done any any kind of what what types of marketing things have you done yeah uh i mean we're in the, in the middle of all that right now um so far it's been mostly organic just trying to spread the word i've certainly hit up a lot of uh influential friends and we've had a lot of influential people already spreading the word um uh, Patty Millett, Justin Bieber's mom, has tweeted many times about us. Um, you know, Dave Ramsey has been on board. Uh, gosh, my mind is going blank. But there are several people that have tweeted about it with, you know, million plus followers. Um, and now we're uh, starting to work more closely with all the future nonprofits and organizations we want to partner with. Um, and so that'll be the, the next wave. And then uh, we're releasing a Purpose Hotel soundtrack which is exciting because I've already got about 15 to 20 influential bands and musicians who have donated a song and uh, they're all going to hopefully be spreading the word on that as well. So then we'll be hitting all of those audiences. Um, we still have several press outlets that are, that are doing things. Um, and, uh, and then I have, we just uh, have soft launched a little social media avatar idea yesterday where that's not a new idea, uh, but instead of asking people to, Hey, slap our logo on your avatar. That's boring. That's not going to be interesting. So I've asked people to, um, to design and draw or write, uh, make your own avatar that's, that says what your purpose is for your life. 
and make that look however you want it to look. All we're asking is that people point to mypurposeis.com, um, which we're working on a little splash page for that. But essentially, it points back to the Kickstarter campaign. And we purposely took out the word hotel, used a different domain name, because if it's my if it's the purposehotel.com, then a lot of people won't click on that because the the word hotel is, is boring and not that interesting. So uh, if they write mypurposes.com hopefully that'll uh spark some curiosity from their friends and followers and uh we'll get people headed our direction uh that, that's a good I, I like that plan have you uh have you talked to peter daring at all i have not no okay so he's with peak design he was oh, yeah. The first, yeah yeah i know those first, guys yeah the first interview i ever did actually uh, on this channel was with peter daring of peak design and what I loved about him is he had a photography product. It was a bag. Uh, and then he su subsequently he's raised, actually it was a second product, but uh, he's raised a lot of money on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be somebody that uh, you uh, get in touch with because he loves to help. He helps my clients when we're raising money on Kickstarter. He, he really helps them uh, develop a good story and all that kind of stuff. So I just want to know if you if you'd reached out to him because he's in the he's in the supply side of what you're doing. Yeah, in fact, uh, they sent me a bag, and uh, I've helped promote their uh, Kickstarter campaigns. And Trey, they're partnering with Trey Ratcliffe, and Trey yeah. is a, is a longtime friend of mine. And um, I mean, they're killing it. You know, it, it's amazing how I think in their first day last week they raised over a million dollars for a camera bag, uh, which yeah. is just insane. Um, and uh, and so obviously, it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier, though. It's like we have a harder challenge because not only we're like a, a, a good, a social good cause, but also we're asking people to, to give to a hotel, to back a hotel that you may never stay in. You know, you may never, this is going to be in Nashville. This isn't going to be in your city. So it's a stretch for sure. Whereas a camera bag is like, you'll get this bag and you'll be able to use it for the rest of your life. And it's going to be really cool and really efficient. And so, um, yeah, we've got we've got a tough goal in front of us for sure. Are you giving away discounts on the Kickstarter page? And I'm going to link to it right here. Uh, are you giving away discounts to stay in the hotel for you know for people that that pledge? Yes, I'm uh, blinking on all the details, but there well, are. I think you can see it right here. So yeah, yeah, there are levels where um, it basically essentially reserves your room. Uh, you're booking a hotel room, which is fun. So yeah, we're working on that for sure. So I also interviewed uh, an NBA player. His name was Dikembe Mutombo. I don't know if <laughs> That's you're... amazing. Big so, uh, yeah, I don't know if you know this, but he spent a hell, heck, let me see the word heck, of a lot of time building a hospital in Africa. Hmm. And uh, he, I think he even had a bigger challenge than you. Uh, but he was able to do it. It took a long time, but he was able to do it and give back to his hometown town in Africa and uh, was able to secure the funds to create wow. this hospital that's serving the greater good. And I'm not sure you've you heard about that story or, or that you've reached out to him because I'm sure there's somebody else that could help. I mean, the reason I'm bringing all this up is because I want to see this happen. I think it's a yeah. great cause. Well, thank you. Okay, so what, Jeremy, about this project haven't I asked that I should have asked? It's a good question. Um... Yeah, I mean, we're we're just trying to let we really want to let people leave their legacy through this. So this is a, you know, even with Kickstarter, other products are are something that may or not be useful in ten years. But we hopefully, you know, we hope that at the end of our lives that this brand will just be getting started. You know, and this is a much bigger than money. It's much bigger than a building. It's much bigger than a, you know, a cool idea. This is truly something, you know, that that I hope can change the world. And it's been so fun to see the response because the, the phrase change the world is so cliche, you know, it's so tired and old. And um, so it's been fun to see people get the vision and say, oh my gosh, this could actually change the world, especially the more hotels there are. Um, this really could have a significant impact on providing jobs for people in third world countries, uh, even in the United States. Like this is, uh, uh, I truly think a great, um, cause in every way. And I, and I hope to, uh, help my fellow photographers and artists, you know, we want to sell their work 
in our hotel. I want every floor of the building to be full of beautiful stories and beautiful artwork. And I hope that when we sell them, it'll help them uh, stay afloat. And it will also provide uh, money to organizations that do art therapy so that kids who have been through, you know, troubled past can uh, do art therapy and help help process their past. So uh, it's just an endless abyss of creativity and helping other people. And uh, that's why I'm so excited about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm excited for you. Really appreciate you you coming on today. I just want to kind of summarize for the marketers out there that have been watching this. Great background on an influencer. In fact, Huffington Post, which I was a part of this, uh, named him the top photographer in the world for 2000. Was it 14 or 15? So 14. he knows. Yeah, he knows how to uh, to get the word out there in social media. Um, and, you know, for episodic content, for anything photo related, this is a guy that you want to work with. I've worked with him and I know he's a first class guy, knows how to get things done and won't disappoint you. Second, please support his, his hotel. I, I really want to make this a good case study, even for marketers, you know, about how to raise money on K Kickstarter, how to get the word out through influencers. And then day one of when this hotel will be built three to five years from now, I would guess. I mean, ready to be occupied, maybe sooner, Jeremy. I don't know what the, your time frame is. Mm -hmm. uh, I would really like to revisit this and just work backwards and say, you know, this is what went well, what didn't go well, and kind of present that as a case study. So go support his Kickstarter effort right here. And uh, Jeremy, any closing thoughts? I think that's it, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate anybody, yeah. appreciate anybody watching. So thank you. All right. Thank you.